the sound engineer to help me with this. Hi, everyone, and we are here on Apricot Hour. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you for staying with us. Um, I'm just going to get the rest of the people in the studio, um, and then we're going to kick off the show, um, and then we're just going to get going. We're so sorry for the break in transmission because, actually, we have so much to talk about today, so it's soft work. We know it's the work of our enemies, so everybody should just just... <laughs> ignore basically um right so um what's happening what's happened what is happening this is the situation uh there's several things we want to talk about so oh before we get into it you know apricot hour is also known as the as the pastor bashing hour have you heard this one dolapo people drinking bleach no. Uh, why they no, no, not bleach or detol, detol, detol. Sorry, not bleach, detol. Same thing, same thing. <laughs> they were asked to to uh, uh to drink detol to sanctify or to clear their spirit. I don't even know what or why or what that's about. Um, yeah. So again, the madness continues. But you know, I've said this time and time again. I really don't want this to turn into the Christian or pastor bashing series because. We, I think we're better than that and we're bigger than that. So to the people who still think this is the way to live, let them go ahead. Now, I think we have been joined by just about everyone in the studio. So I can actually talk about what I want to talk about. I'm so sorry. There's so much work going on in the background while we actually try to work out um, what to do. Let me see who I can see who has joined us in the studio. I have. Oh, in Kiru. Perfect. And I think, Bimbo, is that you? Yep, that's me. Hi. Hi, Bimbo. Hey, Bimbo. In Kiru, say hey, hi. Hello, darling. Evening, everyone. Oh, my God. Hey, Bimbo, hey, we hey, can hey. hear your train. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm going to put you on mute just for a minute until we want to talk about what I know you want to talk about. So, um... Tiwa Savage and T-Bills. I'm sure all of you were here when T-Bills called his wife all sorts of names in the book. When T-Bills said um, her, her, what did he say? That her mom um, is trying to turn him into a Beldani. The same way, I'm sorry, for the, <laughs> Dolapo, please, what is Beldani in English? <laughs> Ah, you just be an observer in your relationship, I guess. Exactly. That is mom was I'm trying just to turn it... <laughs> to be an observer in the relationship. And that actually, how many years did they go? Tiwa never cooked for him. Tiwa has never asked him what he wants to eat, blah, 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 blah. Then he said he wanted to commit suicide, but would only do it at the bridge where he knew his friend would conveniently be passing. And then he refused to commit the suicide until his friend really, really passed the bridge and helped him to get down from the bridge. Then his wife did the mother yeah, of what all... You need, the right, you, need the right, you need the right witness. Can't just be committing suicide up and down. So... Um, Exactly. Hold me back. Hold me, hold me. You push you, hold me. You push you, hold me. So then his wife. You without your friends being there. Exactly. Without your friend, without knowing that you even have people who actually will hold you back. Then his wife did the mother of all exposés. She said something, something. Um. Uh. What did she say? She said. Uh, uh, what's the name of the food? Edible catering. Never yeah. Never contributed. Edible catering. He never contributed. No, if only that was oh, yeah. it. Oh, I forgot she about was that. stealing from the finances. He's what he was actually stealing from her, and he was saying, um, getting payments for work that she never got the money or siphoning off the top of the money. Oh yep. my God! And social media lost yep. its collective mind we all lost our god-given mind please 
only for what to happen. Ask me what happened, what I saw in the paper today with this, my two Koro Koro eye. They have been undergoing counseling. Ibada. They are undergoing counseling and they're getting back together. After all that stuff, please. Do you know what I mean? Jesus. I, I want the man in the I would like the man in the house to tell us his take at this I point. Mean, you, you know one thing couples couples do fight, right? Mm. And uh one I always tell my wife is this be very careful what you say. Right. How you say. Right. Where you say. Right. Because when we do make up those things are never going to go away. Yeah. Exactly. And this applies to both T Bills and T Savage, both of them. You, when you guys knew that you were still going to look back, mm. why did you not put all the ton on that wears out there on the wireline for everybody <laughs> to see? For me, I'm like this. Because of what I have said, I can't look back. So even if I'm now like, yeah, this is the father of my son at the end of the day, you know, I, there's still some feelings there, you know, and when he's actually behaving himself, I actually really love him. When he's actually, you know, this relationship could really, really work. This could really be the thing, blah, blah, blah. My dear, we will be chopping in private. You will drive in an unmarked vehicle to my house. You will live in the dead of the night when nobody can see you. We, like, we will put legal writs on every newspaper, every public. If anybody says, oh, my God, T-Bill seen uh, sneaking out of Tiwa's house at 3 a.m., we'll be like, hey, we have kids in common now. Eh, no, it can't look in Peking show, so make my knock on look in Peking again. I cannot make such a public spectacle of my husband, of myself, and then say, at the end of the day, we are working through it, we're working. Now, I noticed, I did notice in Tiwa's, because I noticed two things in Tiwa's, um, I don't even know what to call it, Tiwa's telemondo that she did, basically. The first thing I noticed is, she never answered the question on if she had ever cheated on T-Bills. She said she'd never cheated on him as his wife. Now, they were only married for like a year, even though they'd been together for like eight years or however many years. So I was like, yeah, that's a very Bill Clinton answer right there. So we still don't know the answer to that question. If she actually did any of the things that T-Bills accused her of, in his Instagram rants. The second thing I noticed was she never said, she called all the bad, 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 bad things that he had done, no. But she never said, he's a bad man. I would never get with him again. It is over. This is the end. I'm divorcing him tomorrow. I'm going to my lawyer. I'm going to draw up the papers. She never said it. She never said it. So now I'm wondering if she just did that to leave the door open in case of a day like today, or, I mean, what, I, what, what do you, okay, first of all, let me start from this. What do you guys think about the fact that they are even getting back together at all? Let's start there. After all that. I mean, I, I, I don't know how to even put that because, I mean, <laughs> Me, me and you, we both know somebody that, that does that basically on Facebook is like one minute or today. The, they're not even together at three words, but today this person is the greatest daddy in the world or whatever. And then tomorrow it'll be like, God turned that fire you. Mm. Like that. And I'm always like, okay, why are you putting all this stuff okay. out here for everybody to see? You know, you cannot. I'm sorry, and I ain't no weapon that is that good. Mm, mm, that you mm. put me on blast publicly yeah. and think that I'll come back and come and be hitting that honey pot. No. Okay, so let's no, talk no. about this honey pot and publicly or whatever. In in fairness to Tiwa, 
T-Bill started it. She had moved, Abby, he had moved out of the family house months prior. They weren't living together. He went on Instagram and he was the bitch first. He went on Instagram and said, my wife doesn't okay. do this. My wife doesn't do this. My wife is like this. She and her mother wants to tell me to be with Danny. In short, I think the mother has a baba that he uses. Uh, this is this, this, this. When I met her, she was an innocent little girl. She didn't do papa papa papa. Now she has turned to a way where she has joined bad gang, basically. Um, now she did say that papa papa papa. Pa, pa. There's a very important question there that, that we probably don't have the answer to, but it might play a very, very pivotal role in this. Mm-hmm. Is Tiwa's mom either living with them or constantly showing up in that house almost like every day or every other day? Unfortunately, I don't have the answer to that question, but I think Tiwa's mom lives in the UK. Tiwa is a London girl. It is work that took her when because she was here. She did this there, this thing they mm. do here, X Factor yeah. or whatever they do here. Yep. But her market no sell. Now when uh, yeah, T Bills yeah. with uh, the T Bills saw her, T Bills did what he did, i.e. you know bringing her up there and uh, blah 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 blah. And then it is from T Bills giving her small 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 exposure that the Maven dynasty saw her and took her on and she became the first lady of the Maven dynasty. I'm, I'm sorry, whoever that is, I'm just going to put your mute right quick. She became the first lady of the Maven dynasty. So she now started going to, um, she started going to America really often. Uh, I'm sorry, going to Nigeria to the point where she now moved there because that's where her market was selling. That's where people were listening to her music. That's where she can command a gig for, you know, 10,000 or 20, and then that became 2 million, became 3 million, became 10 million, became 20 million. Now, London babe before, and I think her mom still lives here. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, just bear with me one minute. I've got another caller on the line who I think is calling from Nigeria. Hi, caller, telephone number ending 6068. Can you hear me? Drunken Shaolin in the house. Ah, Drunken Shaolin! This is a quick one because you know it's a Friday. And yeah. there are people that have missed me three days this night. You need to go and make sure you are not You need to go, you need to go and make, make good on the promise. Yeah, so before they change their mind. Uh-huh. So I know you guys haven't got into. You haven't got into. Um, the long issue yet. Yes, yes. Really, that's, that's the only thing I think I have. That's the only thing I have. Uh, Please, by, have, all, uh, by all means. Go ahead. Okay. Um, there's only one thing. The long has, has been standing for quite a, a while now. Yes, uh, yes. President. Everybody just wonders how he ever became a minister and everything. Mm-hmm. But the cocoa of the matter, which I want people to, you know, you know, put into consideration before the children is that the ministry of sport which she supervises is not in charge or they are not responsible for payment of fees the superpower comes out to any of the national things. It Fair is enough. supposed to be handled by the NFL. It is supposed to be handled by the NFL. So if anybody should be held accountable at all, it is the NFL. The mere fact that the minister is coming into play is because the NFL has Dedicated on their note, what they're supposed to do. And now, because they need to do things in Nigeria, the team has to step in and do something. But, like I said, unfortunately for them, that one doesn't know how to speak. He yes. always put his foot in his mouth. And, you know, the matter that did not concern him published and it has blown up in his face, that kind of stuff. A hundred percent. Ideally, it is not his. But let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this, drunken Shaolin. If, say, for example, okay, so we we heard a a few days ago that there was a a young boy that was shot down on the streets in, in Kilburn here in the UK. And one of the first things that people said was, ah, there are many, many things wrong with the UK. There's someone who is echoing. 
I can't work out who it is. Okay. And that there's many things wrong with the UK, but gun crime was was never one of them, right? We never had a problem with gun crime. When did this start? And again, the boy was a Muslim boy, so people are now talking about, oh my God, you know, is it a hate crime? Is it what happened? And then people are now calling on the mayor of London, who is not just the mayor of London, and people are concerned about the rising gun crimes in the city, but also a Muslim to say something on what is going on. Like, are, are we safe? What's going on? How can they be shooting? When did, uh, uh, what is it called? London turn to Wild Wild West and they're shooting. The mayor has two options at this point. Point number one, he can say, I am not the Metropolitan Police. I cannot answer questions on how the boy got shot, why the boy got shot, what the, 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 the uh, motivation is. For he this, not be close to a lifetime because he will lose if he says that. Uh -huh. No, he he can say that. He can say, he can put it in a kind of a way where he say, "Oh, we are working with the, you know, we're working with the the yeah, metropolitan police to bring you guys answers, to bring you guys whatever the case may be." He can say all of that. What he can't say, and sorry, I'm going to need you to bear with me because I think I'm the one who's echoing, but I need to work out why. <laughs> so what he can't say is the reason why people are getting shot up and down is because, uh, after all, when we told you people, don't be watching bad, bad film. And then again, some people have just learned how to go and do the... If it's not your jurisdiction, don't talk about it. If it is your jurisdiction, tell the answers the people want to hear. If you don't know what to say, don't say anything. Yeah. Very, that's a very good, that's a very good um, example, a very good um, um, whatever. Like, what, like we said, like, like I already said after that, yes, we all know that Dalong is an idiot, and whenever you open mm. his mouth, more often than not, he puts his foot in it and everything. I, like you said, they should have just kept quiet and not said anything. I, ideally, the problem was not his. Absolutely. When, you know, when you have a situation where, when, when you have a situation where a bunch of girls have done well, they have won a competition, and they're back in the country, and they're not being celebrated and not being paid, mm. and they need to be paid, and, you know, they start making a ruckus about it. The, you know, the first point of call that everybody's going to, you know, point fingers at is the government. Like, well, yes. Like, it is the government that is supposed to be in charge of the and everything. Whenever the guys do something, they always um, do a celebration with the guys, they pay them the money and all that kind of stuff. But it's not that those are done, they are, you know, pushing them to the corner, pushing them to the side, they're not giving them their just dues. But, you know, we always forget that it's actually not the ministry's responsibility. <laughs> The and same way, the same way, it is, it is not. And hold on, hold on a second. What we keep saying is not the Ministry of Sports' responsibility. Is the NFS sort of like a parastatal under the ministry or not? No, that's the thing. They went to the FIFA and they said they wanted to be. It, it, it's supposed to be a whole. Um, um, what do I call it? Organization on its own. NFS ideally should only report to FIFA. Where does the budget for the The NFS is supposed to be looking for their money for any competition. Any competition that involves the football teams, the NFS is supposed to source funds for them, either from the private sector from any and from anywhere that they can get those funds. Sponsorship. Because basically any competition that the national teams take part in, right have um, you know sponsored or FIFA sponsored, they get money from that. For the mere fact that the girls won this competition, they can get some money from FIFA. That's the thing. Hey, I don't know, maybe like a million dollars or something. Or maybe that money has not come in yet. But the thing is that NFS is answerable only to FIFA, not to the Ministry of Sports. But whenever they're in trouble and need money, they know how to run to the Ministry of Sports and mm, mm, out. Because mm. they are the ones that uh, have money and you can help us and all that kind of stuff. And the Ministry, unfortunately, accedes to those requests. Just so that there will not be any purpose. You know, whenever the girls make noise, whenever any, um, all these footballers make noise, always 
one way or another, I always get back to the ministry that, hey, you have the ones that are necessary, you are the ones not So I give you, it's NFS for employment. That's the issue. Which, which, which I, I, I totally agree with you, and it makes sense. But you see, you have to flip the coin and look at it this way. When things are going all good, what does the minister of sport do? What does he do? He, he wants to be the land right for everything. He's his face that will be in Brazil for the Olympics or whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. For some reason, I, I'm sorry. You do not open your mouth. If you don't know, and they, and you had these girls talking about being paid their work, their allowances. All you had to say was, wait, I'm definitely going to look into this. I will End talk off. to the like, End of. Of about this, and I will wait. Don't say, well, we didn't expect them to win. See, by saying you know, you very, very 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 to win, obviously very, means that you are also accepting responsibility that you are the one that's supposed to be paying. That's 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 the the A to Z of it is I when when I do something within my company where um it's one of my staff members that messed up I'm not gonna say that's the person you should go and meet at the end of the day we are not responsible for this budget or we are not the ones who deal with nah I don't get to say that if I've put myself out as the yeah. face for this. Um, whatever this thing the box stops at me so even if I have to go and get that money from somewhere else I have to then say we have paid them I don't need to explain to the masses that oh it is not the ministry of sports that paid them it's this money actually comes from somewhere else which I find happens a lot in Nigerian politics where People know way more than they should. Where people say, no, it's not that guy that's responsible for... No, uh, you know, Tinubu is in the right-hand pocket of so, 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 and so. Please, were you there? Are you in the parlor of all these people? No, you're not. I don't care who is in whose pocket and who's doing what and what prior state does what. If there is a question to be answered, if you take it upon yourself to answer it, you have to answer it correctly. And you have to come correct and say exactly what the... That's all. That's all. Because like Dolapo rightly said, I agree. I agree. the time comes when it's time to take the shine. You are the one in your red beret in Mexico. I be where did they go and uh, Brazil and they wore the berets. Exactly. So, exactly. Uh, please tell him to stop wearing that damn beret. You're not. You're not. What are you talking? How the hell did he even get that position? Because this man seems to know absolutely nothing about sports. He came from law. He came from a law department. That is one of the mysteries. That is one of the mysteries of this government. Only God knows. I'm sorry. It's getting to a point where I'm one of those that said, you know what, Buari is is the guy. But at the same time, I don't truly think to do something. Before I start saying maybe Jonathan. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. We start to because I saw the all the choices before me. But the, the the kind of people that I've seen as part of the executive of this first mind boggling the way they talk. Mm. Maybe some of they need to take a class. They're just shown shown white white house briefs how it's done. They cuckoo so watch. They cuckoo the watch. They, they, stay, the they stay. They stay watching CNN. They stay watching. They cuckoo know everything. They cuckoo know everything. Yeah, but you see, there's an ego. There's an, there's an ego problem where. They, they, they're almost like Trump. They're taking the mic. Everybody wants to wants to get the mic and say their own. Okay, when, when there's a problem, when, when there's an issue within the country, all right, you have to look at the top. The top decides on who will speak on that issue, and you will speak what my position is. You don't want to see what your position is, mm -hmm. all right? If I'm the president and there is been a there's been, there's been a bombing in Kaduna. For God's sake, and I want the national security advisor to come and speak on that. I said, okay, talk to the press, and this is what you say. Don't let him know exactly. Don't give him all the information we know because of a security case or whatever. You, do, as the NSA, don't go out there and now speak it to the vanguard or, or whichever press member there. I say that I know personally those that are responsible. Did 
president tell you to see that? Oh, oh, I've seen um, there's a there's a program called In the Thick of It, which is actually like a satire on the life of the Tony Blair um, uh, spin doctor. I've forgotten his name. His name doesn't come to mind now. But the Tony Blair spin doctor was um, I mean. He was asked, they spent an hour deciding whether to use with or along in a sentence. Because do you know how the difference between those two words can completely change the tone of a speech, can completely change what you are saying? Leading up to the Iraq war, right up until the last, I said, say anything that does not sound like we are ready for war. We are not coming out right now to say we're going to fight a war. We're not coming out right now to say there will be a war. So do not say anything that's, that suggests that, oh, any minutes now we're ready for war or any, until we are ready to make the, nobody goes out and speaks on their own back. Nobody, you should watch in the thick of it. It's actually fantastic. I mean, there's an hour saying, if you're asked this question, how do you answer it? If you're asked this question, how do you filibuster back to another question? You will see, you will see how politicians learn how they are asked questions on homosexuality and end up talking about education. <laughs> how they are asked questions on on um, uh, uh, the, the upcoming war in Iraq and they end up talking about women's liberation. You just deflect it. You deflect, you deflect, and they all deflect with one voice. Inside the patio, Tony Blair might not like David Cameron inside the same patio, but when you go outside and there is a microphone thrust under your face, this is this is the line, this is the party line, this is what we're going to say, this is how we stand on this issue, this is what, yeah. whatever it is that is the labor line is what the labor people will say, whatever is the conservative line is what the conservative people will say. So I don't see a situation where Dalon will open it well, like you rightly said, Dalon, his village people are blowing him breeze. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, his village people don't like him at all. I don't know what he did to them. But for him to say that is just furthermore. But then again, he's saying it in a Nigeria where he can say it. He's saying it in a Nigeria where he. What happened? They got stranded in Olympics. They got stranded in somehow, somehow they found their way to that Olympics, and that was the end of Solomon Grundy. What happened to the money? How did they get stranded? What happened to the training? Well, everybody, people who do their own blog, write blog. People where they run newspaper, write newspaper. What was the outcome? Nothing happened. So this is what gives them the liver to say more and more and more outrageous things. I don't know if uh, Melaye really said what he said about Tinubu's wife or whatever, but even if he said it, come. This time tomorrow, we are talking about Tokema Kinwa's book. We're talking about... So there is no repercussion. There is no fallout. There is nothing... Dalong has said what Dalong has said. Whoever is supposed to pay the girls needs to pay the girls. And if that person decides he's not paying the girls, let the girls hold on to the trophy for, you know, melt it down, use it to do panda. Like, no one cares. Nothing will happen. There is no fallout. There is no repercussion. Nobody goes to jail. Nobody gets anything taken off. The this is the country that you will say something outside. Uh, that's UK or US is the country that you will say something that does not um, tread party line. And the prime minister will call you. And you have a brief 30 minutes conversation with the prime minister. Only you will go home and the next day you will say, I've looked at it. I think I should resign. Oh, only you yeah. looked at it by yourself and decided oh. that it's like this work doesn't favor you again. As in, with the, there are repercussions. There are repercussions for actions. There are, who here remember the moat? There was a woman, the moat. Now, this guy, there was a woman who... Um, what is her name? Oh my God, I forget her name. But she was the one in politics. I think her husband has some kind of role within, but a very, very negligible role. The guy was using her expense card yes, to I buy. Her to, now. Yes, I her name. Thank I you. To buy yes. porn online. He was buying porn on the hmm. internet. And um, what else did he do with the card? He built a moat. He built a moat around their house. 
the yes uh, it, it's government money to get it from the house into a castle he was looking at it that i've always seen moats in films and now i want a moat basically i want one and the 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 man the woman divorced her husband well, maybe they're sneaking in to see each other every night, though. But she came out on camera and said, this man, this moat building, porn watching, government money stealing, ragamuffin, me and I, we not did the same destiny again. Then the guy made a speech along the lines of, no, 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 no. She not lie. Not true. I did Chris. I know well. Nami Kosa. Please let let this not impact in her political career for any reason. You guys don't take it out against her. This was all me. This was all my fault. This was all, you know, I did all of this. And still, her career stagnated. I mean, look at it today. We still don't remember her name. Her career stagnated, stalled. And that was the end of Solomon Grundy. She's still wandering around Paul Mall somewhere in the corridors of power, but she's not in any kind of visible role like she was before. And she before. was commissioner for something, no, she wasn't a small girl. She was um she was um she had a big role. Yeah, she was primed for for prime minister, you know, they were grooming her until her husband started using using government money as one money. And that was that's that's that. We have governors that will say things, say things that blow the mind and nothing happens. So why won't Dalong say what Dalong said? Whether or not it is his, you know, his office or not that's supposed to deal with this thing. It's us that have the work to do. We have a long... A long... You know, it's when... And sometimes when we complain about that Nigerian government and say the government is bad, the government is this or whatever, we tend to forget that we as as citizens are very, very bad. We we get the government we deserve, really. Absolutely. Uh, then here in Canada, I remember we had uh, not even a federal minister, this was a provincial minister in Ontario, who had business all over the province. And if you know Ontario province, Ontario province is, is as big as a country. And stuff. Mm. So when she comes into the into Toronto, she takes a limo, which is quite wrong to call it a limo. It's pretty much an executive car, a Lincoln Town car, really. Not mm. a full limo stretched out or anything. Mm. And, and she gets that. Now, ordinarily, that would not, not be so bad, except that the limo company is owned by one of the contributors to the campaign front. Uh -huh. oh. All right? For that reason, when when the report is dug into it, I found that out. They found out that she has she has gotten a limo rise to it of about they, they valued the office it was about maybe five thousand dollars. You know, it took less than four days for that father to resign her job. Needs quickly. Needs. And I said five thousand dollars. That's the one that the local government will spend on the weekend. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not saying every of our, I mean, it, literally, if every Nigerian resigned their post every time they did something wrong, we would have no leaders, right? We, the, we know well, that I will grant you and I will give you that. But watch your mouths. Watch your no. mouths. Watch what you say. Just watch what you say. Anyway, Shaolin Master, you are still with us, which means I'm going to ask you a question. Shaolin Master, Mbo? You better make it quick. I <laughs> are you the one that accepted the cola nuts from the Tiwa Savage's family? Okay, I was very see. I'm even confused. I because one day we are hearing Tiwa, another day we are hearing Toke. I don't know who is who. Is. <laughs> Everybody is drama. It's just into this other person's drama. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. One one bleach, one no bleach. <laughs> if they pass me on the road now, I will never know who is who. <laughs> so this one I just say one bleach and one is not bleach. It has not helped the matter at all. I don't know who is who. <laughs> so you they fought everybody this was saying you are a bastard, you're a bongolo cigar. Tewa Savage and her husband that the they are the ones that started the court the this 2016 they used it to start fights. Now they're undergoing counseling and apparently 
they are, they are, they are, they are back together, or they they've been seen out so once. After the abuse, they have they have worked everything out after all the, all the abuse. And Edible Catherine said she's not eating tea bills again. But after all, she didn't know hey, tea hey, bills. That's where Edible Catherine came from. Oh, you didn't know. <laughs> Why are you like this, Charlene Master? Because they did write it on the back of a Gulda bottle now. You don't know where it comes from. Yes, now. <laughs> well, I had to read the book when was, was trending at a point in time. I was like, what the heck is going on? Which one is the book again? Yes. I mean, it's the book it's book now. Hey, you would know what they are talking about. about. <laughs> <laughs> It is, uh, they are back together. Um, at this point, I think they should not just call us into their matter. They should not just involve. Ah, ah, thank God. Charlene, don't go anywhere because you're going to help Dolakbo with this question. I need men. 50 shades of gray. 50 shades darker, which is book two. Uh -huh. the, the trailer is now out because there's now going to be... The, the second film is going to go, launch uh, um, on February 14th, on Valentine's Day, which is exactly what happened, was it this year or last year, with the first one as well. My, question to, my question to you is this. I know, I'm sure neither of you have read it because you're upstanding men and uh, citizens. So what hap what's is happened? Is laughing? And Kiri is laughing. <laughs> She said now she said she just giggled small, she didn't laugh. <laughs> when okay, when so men forward. when men have been saying what they've been saying about porn and men watch porn and women are like Oh my God, that's so dirty. Oh my God, what's wrong with you? Are you an animal? Can't you control yourself? What do you mean? Obviously not the kind of women you hang with, but let me finish my sentence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure saying that to an extent, women have always been, some women have been somewhat disdainful of porn, disdainful of men's... Uh, attraction or interest in porn and actually look down on other women who watch porn so what is it about 50 why did they what do you think this offers that day-to-day -day porn doesn't okay. you see the thing about acceptance of anything in this world is packaging Mm. There's yeah. nothing new in that person. Mm. It is the way that it's presented that makes it, you know, new, seemingly new. So if um, you act upon rightly, people will be interested. And that is basically what this um, 50 Shades of Blue or Grey or whatever <laughs> It's just, you know, fantastic packaging. And yeah. women are now, you know, they, they, they can say that I have watched. Fifty shades of grey, and not feel not feel bad about it, not feel Absolutely. as if they're dirty or they've done something dirty. Because look, uh, this has a storyline. You know, you have a we porn connoisseurs. There's a big <laughs> story, storyline. You, you click on your triple X website, and you know you sit down, you watch what you need to watch, and you're done and leave. But when there's a storyline, there's a guy and a girl. And there's um, all sorts of things being done, but you know there's there's suspense, there's drama, all that kind of stuff. It makes it more accessible. And mm. it's like I said, at the end of the day, it's all just packaging. So mm. uh, I mean, we're not going to we're not going to bust their bubble and let them know that look, it's still porn at the end of the day. <laughs> let them have their let them have their day. Let and, them have their, you know, let, yeah. them good. Let, them, let them feel good. Let them let them feel good. That's okay. They're watching the kids want. That's your Exactly. I mean, personally, I don't. I, to me, it's just porn, as far as I can see. All right, mm. that's what it is. Uh, uh, when you go back and look at, I mean, for guys, maybe because we're just basically very visual, we just want to see the action. Okay, mm. good. You know, maybe that's why for guys we might be more interested in, like, say, Debbie, Debbie does Dallas. But for women, you might. What be the more whole Dallas? Like, Dallas is a big town. Anyway, continue. Oh, but it was, it was a big movie back then, I remember in high school. 
<laughs> Pentagon, so and it's a Pentagon. Be, but the more it's, <laughs> you might be interested. You might say, what's the movie I'm trying to remember? Was it Poetic Justice? Yes, With, uh, yes, yes. Oh, my God. Will Smith's yeah, wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, yeah. I mean, it's going to be difficult to convince anybody that nothing happened in that scene. Mm. So that scene was very serious. Both of them served the same purpose. Stimulate your senses. Get you excited. Mm. Uh, hopefully get you over. And you're done. So to me, people, you know, women get all excited with a shit gray or shady or whatever it's called now. It's mm. no different from when you guys were in high school and we were reading your milk Absolutely. Your M and B. Exactly. That's exactly. what it was. Mm-hmm. Now you have mm-hmm. the big gray. Yeah. But, but the thing is, it wasn't that fantastic, though. The book? Yeah. <laughs> the book. Yeah. You know what? It you was see, better. The, the book I don't know what. I never went to watch the film. I never went to watch the film because I read, I bought the three books at the same time. Everyone was going to buy the books. I said, ah, let me go and see what the excitement is about. I bought the three books at the same time. As I speak to you, I believe I'm still on page 52 of the first book. Correct. I never read it. It's Correct. in my house. Complete. Looking neat. I can sell it now at a show, book show. But when my friend went and watched the film, she booked in advance for the film. She oh, went yes. and watched the film. And I was going to invite her to dinner. I refused to go. She said, I'm going to watch 50 Shades of Grey. She came back home, upset. The man laughed her for the whole weekend. <laughs> she goes, can you imagine? She goes, feel that she has never been so angry in her life. But she had paid. She had to sit through it. You know? She said to me, you know, if you are you, I won't go. I said, so I'll just leave me alone. Because I'm going to go into the cinema. I can't. She was so annoyed. The film was, they failed it. They failed it. They, they failed it. 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 They failed they are I still going. To... I wasn't even impressed again. Yet again. They're still gonna fail the darker one. And let me tell you. Uh, what. No, they're gonna fail. The books no. were shit. You are absolutely right. The books were shit. But it made money, didn't it? I thought it made money. Made money, Kay. Made, 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 made millionaires. In the, book, in the box office. No, it didn't make what yeah, it was supposed to. The, 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 the movie. The book. The movies. Did not but make I what. I they... there was so much. There was so much knowledge um, about the movie and stuff. They made money, but they fell mm. short uh-huh. of what they were, what they thought they would yeah, make. So. They thought it would be the smash hits that would end all smash hits. That women would stand up and women would go and women would, you know, close down the whole world. Because, because, what, you, because what you women want to see is be lied to with the storyline <laughs> about this guy who is always right for white horse and is mm. coming is all muscular and because you see the muscles on the hands you see the abs you see everything so you have the same ribbed muscles is what is between the legs and everything and you all believe that you know what someone's so gorgeous that looks like this, you know he looks like a great god for god's sake has eyes only for you please oh. all right oh. this is what they try oh. to sell to you sex in the city no it doesn't work. Come back to it us. All right. Come and follow our daddy on the beer this belly. Is, this is exactly this is what yeah. Raymond looks like. Okay, okay. Right. You are taking up of my dear time. I am going to leave you now. Oh, yeah. Go and drink your beer. Go and drink your beer. Okay. Have a lovely night. Have a lovely night. Have a lovely night. Have a lovely night. Have a Have a lovely night. 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 Have a Thank you very much. We want to just hang, handle the very last topic and then we're going to go. Um, and I once again apologize to everyone because of the sound issues, but we are going to get this sorted. We just keep getting better and better. So just hang with us and just bear with us while we, we, we get through our little teething difficulties. There will always be more gist. This is Nigeria. There will always be a pro quo. I want to talk about Mick Jagger. Oh, Mick Jagger. Hey. Oh boy. Let me read. Let me... Proper, proper advertisement for the Viagra. Viagra. <laughs> Let me read his statistics, if I may. Mick Jagger Ooh. is 73. He just welcomed his eighth child with his girlfriend, Ooh. Melanie Hanrick. Melanie is 29. She's his, there for the money. His children, Hi. other than this uh, baby bum boy, a range from the ages of 17 
to 45 years old. Actually, that one that was 45 has clocked 46 this year. So this news is a bit old. Mick himself. Uh, himself born, right? born, okay. Mick became yeah, a great a grandfather. grandfather. He's not a granddad, Dorako. He's a great <laughs> grandfather. <laughs> Who now don't born? He became a great grandfather in 2014. So my question to you is this, Dolapo, and then if you tell me real quick so that we can round this up, um, what you make of it, and do you care? What What do you make of the whole thing? To me, you know what everybody has, everybody that you mentioned here, except for the baby. <laughs> As far as the young lady is waiting now, and make himself, everybody has their own role to play and they have their own expectation. But Nick, he's just happy that he has a 29 year old. Who still but wants to I rock, the, who still wants to rock his, uh, his uh, DJ stick. Exactly. And for the 29 year old, having a baby is cementing our own future financially. Omo lomo, pension lo bade, she's on her pension. <laughs> She's on her pension. So, um... Because if I was me, I'll be looking, I'll be looking at the poor boy in the house very carefully. Like, let's... I mean, someone like Mick would not... I don't think you get to be this age without having some kind of sense. The second that baby is coming out, they are cutting that placenta and using it to do DNA and using it to, you know, as soon as the child is coming out. What do you say to people who say... Oh my God, he should be ashamed of himself. What is he playing? What is it? He will not live to see that child be 10 years old. He will not live to see that child be 20 years old. What do you think of people who have some sort of judgment about having a baby later, that late in life? You know what? Let them be on business. As long as I'm not paying to feed the kid. That's no while. That's, I mean, I'm sorry, you know. If my papa was 70 before he had me and he had that kind of money, I'll forgive him. I'll forgive him all things. Number one. Number two, let's not forget that the mother is 29. So he's not going to be left an orphan. He's not going to be left, uh, you know, if your father passes, I know friends that their father passed when they were in primary school, when they were inside, they didn't die. They have mother, they have family. Yeah, and... yeah let's hope the mother is the one that actually has that natural mind. And that's also true. What do you make of the whole thing in Kiru? Let's round up on this topic and then we can call it a day. Uh, look, the lock was said, it's not anybody's business. The man has the dosh for that child to be sorted for life, no concern anybody. If the woman is a gold digger, she dug gold and she, she, she's too gold, in fact. Mm. Dug the first time. So I beg, that's life, isn't it? If Absolutely. You do it once in a while. Yeah. I need the child. Yeah. Me, I, I would say, you know, if you're old like that, having a child, when the child wants to go out to work, how you want to work is working, still go play ball. Mm. Bro, bro has money. He will yes. hire a coach yeah. and sit down in the backyard and be watching his son play football. Nobody's <laughs> money for it, so why not? Nobody's yeah, business. Yeah, I, I, I think the only thing I'd be worried about, basically, as yeah. a parent is, in that house, I would say, okay, what kind of child is this going to be? You know, what is the quality of my own bullet that I put in there? Mm. You know, I'm an old man. Come on, uh, slow. So that the child doesn't exactly. <laughs> mm. I was trying to look for the English word that I was up to. No, I did, let the child. Let the child, let the child don't be like the sperm. Just be doing zugo, 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 up and down. Exactly. Because I know that, you know, with age, the, the quality of your product will also go down. Yes, sir. Exactly. So this is how, this is what I think. I think people don't give old men enough credit where they say, because I remember when, um, um, what's his name now? Uh, Edo State's governor that year. What was his name? What's going on with my brain these days? Oh, Shomole. Oh, oh Shomole, yeah. Uh -huh. ugly ad. He called war war and... <laughs> and people were like, 
Oh my God, this girl is nothing but a gold digger. Look how beautiful she is. Do you think she would have been with him if he didn't have the kind of money he has? Or she only really fall my hand. Oh my God, definitely it's clear what such a woman is looking for. She has no, definitely this one is all about the money. Oh, we even heard she's shipped her, her mother over. Her family now live in one palatial house somewhere in Edo there. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And people had things to say. And I read a lot of comments or uh, social media comments comments on this um woman as well Henrik and everybody was like come on now look at uh, uh, Mick Jagger's face like a bag of nuts you cannot tell me you enjoy having sex with a 73 year old man you are definitely in this for money blah 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 and I'm like like Dolak more rightly said do you think these men don't know do you think Mick Jagger lived to be 73 in rock and roll and not know a gold digger when he sees one do you think that he is not just grateful like the rap was? If there is a woman in whatever age who will happily put my penis and my balls in her mouth, my 73-year-old balls, I am going to let her. Number three, if you are uh, Oshomole and you have that kind of money, the kind of money that will even make a half caste or whatever she is. I, I, I did not say she's from Egypt or Eritrea or wherever she's supposedly mm. from. Please, excuse me. Is it Mama or Sahon that I will go and carry and put in my house? My, my dear. I would carry the hardest, finest, the girl that will allow me to, to follow her, carry and put in my house is exactly who I would carry. I don't understand when people think a man grew to be 50, 60, whatever years, and doesn't have any sense. I remember there was something on social media trending um, at a time about um, some guys, some children, like the children of a very old man wanted to put a stop to the guy's will or something because the guy was changed, st steadily changing everything in his will from them to wife care this was supposed to be the carer the carer that was brought in to be helping baba to be taking his medicine to be helping baba to be doing the uh, care that's a very dangerous position <laughs> so, carer can influence. because this was not even just that carer was influencing Kara was shining baba's knob on the daily Kara was just taking, the thing they asked Kara to do was different. The thing Kara was, as in, Baba was getting it like Baba had never gotten it before. Baba was just, and to me, I feel like if Baba is lucid, if Baba is sound, if Baba is giving away his money that he, he used his hand to work for, to, make. to the person that is giving him joy in his old age, that is not these stupid children that only come and visit me on Christmas Day just to see if I'm alive or yeah. to see if I have died and left everything yeah. to them. This yeah. girl is giving me add on upon add on and giving me a waiting call again. Orgasm upon orgasm. I die fight, you know. You can't have my money. It's my money. I can leave it to whoever I want to leave it to. So. Mm. Isn't that the same thing that happened with that Nicole, uh, Nicole something Smith? She was care up for that yeah. old man. Oh remember? yes, yes. She was yes. care up for that old man. You know, he died. His family came out fighting because mm. Ross had left everything. I think or most of it to her. Obviously, she died, didn't she? Oh so, yes, she died a lot. But she even died all in. She died all in uh, lawsuits upon lawsuits and yes. everything upon yeah, everything. Yeah, I don't think she ever got like... access to that money yet. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know what? I see myself as an old man. I mean, if my dad I mean, left me, it's not with me. But as an old man, 80 years old or whatever, 90, mm. I know that there's nothing I can have. But the poor, the girl wants to be still with me. The girl is fine with me. Last I that, that, my every, you know, dry joke. joke Thank whatever. you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, whatever. You know what? Yeah. I'd be happy to have you around. The only thing I'll ask is, you know what? Whatever it is you're doing out there, please make sure it doesn't tarnish me. Mm -hmm. so oh. look at me as yes. Yes. All right. I'd be yes. a maga, but you don't need to advertise me to the world that I'm That I'm the maga. Thank you. Yes. And to me, I think this is very important. I think, you know, while they're busy talking about quote-unquote hoes, talking about women, gold digging, talking about... 
These men did not hide their gold. They want their gold to be dug. They are 70, Tiri, dig it. Dig the hole. They want to die with a smile on their face. They, 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 never, came, they never came to you saying they wanted rescuing or they wanted that the woman is doing... Now, again, as we know, you know, we're not going to go down into the CD. We do know that some gets um, manhandled and then and, 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 um, persuaded to mm -hmm. sign things they don't want to sign or something. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone like Mick Jagger, a 29-year-old. Come on, have you people seen Mick Jagger? I would give her the money just for agreeing to actually even sleep with me, even if not be Mick get the picking like really you're gonna lay here with me i i i i'll you know it's it's cool we're, we're cool you can have whatever it is that you want and mick jagger has been this is the same mick jagger that turned tina turner's head tina turner was like i've been in showbiz a long time and when mick, mick jagger handled tina turner now i'm sure maybe it's even he, her him that gave her the power to fight ike turner that year because the day she entered room with... But, uh, for God's sake, none of us know this guy. So we don't even know what you. kind of equipment he works with. No, 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 no. Mick Jagger is packing. Oh, no, that is no secret. Uh -huh. That is no secret in the rock and roll world, though. Mick J Whether it still works, Nimi Omo, but Mick Jagger is <laughs> packing. A couple of... Uh, some chemicals will help it. Uh, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm. Back in his, when he was doing that, it's funny, funny dance. He was like, stud, he was stud man. Mick Jagger. Yes, Mick Jagger it. does not play. And he likes them thick and full and lovely. He's not here for size zero guess. Mick Jagger, we hand do you, you two, you will go to your mother and say, ah, I don't default, ah. but I meet one man. No, <laughs> me, self, I know that I pass, be careful. I pass my, you know, he, he's uh -huh. always been a stud. He's always been very, very sexual. He's always been sexually demanding. And he has steadily worked. He has, this is this eighth child. Eighth. That means remove the ones that condoned it. Mick Jagger, what do you mean? Mick Jagger has been out there from time. He has been busy. He has been busy. So, I mean, I just, I agree with Delapo on this one. And I just say, look, whatever, whatever people are doing, let them do it. If the woman looks at herself like, I want to give birth for a 73-year-old man, <laughs> let them. If the man Look looks at himself anyone. that at 73, I want to be doing wah, wah, changing nappy, <laughs> let everybody be doing what they're doing. You know, it's, it's, it is what it is. All you will say is you, you can't do it. But if they look at themselves that they're ready to do it, eh, Okay, go. There's no problem there. So on that note, I think we've covered everything, and um, I think we've we've yeah we've made up for our ten minutes that we missed, and we're ready to say good night. Say good night, Olakwa, with some last words. Hey, good night. You all have a nice weekend, and just uh, with regards to Tiwa's issue, please, if you put it out there, don't come back begging. Thank you. Thank you. In fact, that's even, in fact, you are too much. If, uh, in Kiruka, I'm going to talk you on. Good night, everyone. Have a blessed weekend. And for all the papas out there, find a young girl and she rocks your boat to rock it. And rock it. Life is too oh, short. please. You know, she keeps you young. Uh -uh. Don't you rock you, my boat. Don't rock Enjoy. my boat because I don't. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> What's my boat to be rocking? Oh, jiggy, jiggy, jiggy. Okay, Richard, uh, don't, don't start your weekend. <laughs> I don't know. I don't... <laughs> it's you, or it's you, it's you, it's you. Hey, for me, to see, for me to see one 70 something year old man now, I'll just say, Daddy, come and take. All right. <laughs> Can you imagine how much a girl is watching the girl's account at the moment? I'm my crazy. dear. You know the name of the lottery she has played? She has played the lottery that you get all six figures and the lucky number at the end. What do you mean? Hey, he will, she's good to go. She's good to go. And they just released an album. I mean, Mick Jagger is still making money. Still on it. Yeah. 
right. he's still making money. Yeah. So this is that kind of money that ain't going to quit. So even if the ex-wives were looking at her like you, you don't fit in here. You, what do you know about him? We were the ones that were there for Omo, anybody Omo lo loco? This is now, this, this is a done deal right now. This is, she's, she's, I'm sure every day she's like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Whatever I am now, it is by your grace. No. The day she confirmed that pregnancy. <laughs> what did you say singing? I have hammered. I have hammered. Now God you win. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. We'll see you again this time next Friday. Stay well. Keep your Bye. business out the papers and enjoy your weekend. Yes. Good night. Bye.